This area is uh, known as Island McGee, uh, known locally as Isle McGee or the Island. And uh, over a, a, a past few years, the flower beds that were originally here had degraded beyond repair. So what we decided to do last year was remove all the flower beds and replace them. Uh, so I came up with the idea of uh, recycling fuel tanks and making the fuel tanks into flower beds. These could be constructed off-site uh, built up and then put to and around the, the island in places uh, that were suitable. So these are examples of some of the flower beds that we've made in this area. It's just a, uh, the interior tank and you fill it with soil and then you put a wooden skirt around them and then through the year you can change all the flowers and we've had wild flower beds over behind you. And this then gave us the incentive, working with the mid -East Antrim Council, to enter into Ulster and Bloom, which was the first time that we'd actually done this. Well, I've been interested in gardening for years and years and years. Um, and then I've just recently moved back to the area. And, you know, we were interested in getting the flower beds renovated and up and going. And then we had an idea of starting a gardening society to try and get as many people involved as possible because it, it does really cheer the whole area up and uh, Cherry at Kilcorn Gardens is very keen to get involved as well and try and get things really moving along. Over the winter time as we started uh, making up the flower beds and putting the flower beds uh, around Isle McGee and starting to work on the outside here, uh, people start in the community started to show an interest so in May, we had an opportunity. This area was completely derelict. There used to be two cottages here way back in the 50s, 60s by the Pogues and the McGrady's who lived there. And the whole of the place was knocked down and levelled. And uh, we had an opportunity presented to us by a local resident who uh, presented us with a chance to lease the ground for a number of years. And working with the Mid East Antrim Council and the local residents, we started to put the place together. We had soil given to us, we had pots given to us, we had flowers given to us. We're in a position now where we have a vol volunteers come in on a Saturday morning. We also have a pond over here and we're tr getting involved in biodiversity. So we've got uh, frogs and birds here and we have a local beekeeper who's interested in uh, putting a beehive in here when we've got the flowers. The garden is known as Isle McGee Community Garden. Uh, the garden here is for all the community, all the residents in Isle McGee, uh, young and old. And the idea behind it is to promote horticulture and biodiversity. And that is our aim over the next few years. Hi, we're from Lorne Renovation Generation and we would like to tell the world how fantastic Lorne is. Um, one of the projects that we're doing is trying to brighten up the town centre. So we've added some murals um, around the town centre and we've also taken part in Ulster in Bloom. In 2018, Midnight Standrum launched this uh, master plan for a new cycle path, uh, the route to come through Lorne. So Larn Re Renovation Generation decided that would be our theme this year for the Ulster and Bloom. We decided that we'd have a, um, a cycle theme and bring a lot of colour into it. This is our Garden of Celebrations. This is a collaboration between Mid and East Antrim Council, Larn Renovation Generation and lots of community groups in Larn as well. So lots of people have contributed flowers um, and you can see there the lovely bike that was donated by First Lawn Church as well. What we've been doing is um, trying to put a bit of art around the town. So this is one of our pieces here of a famous guy called Richard Hayward who was brought up in the town. Uh, he was the guy who pioneered uh, the film industry in Ireland. 
He was also the man who pioneered the radio stations in Ireland. Um, this is just one of her pieces. We've also got um, another piece at the other side of the town of Henry McNeil, who was the man who brought tourism to Ireland, who um, had lots of hotels around the town. He actually had more hotels than any other person in uh, the UK at one stage. Um, as you can see here at the Black Arch, uh, it's a famous landmark around Larne. There's a jumping car going through the Black Arch, so we're hoping to get a statue of a jumping car up in the town centre soon. Having won UK Village of the Year and the Village was just ecstatic, um, and this has been a particularly good year with numerous visitors coming in to see um, how we've done it and what we're all about. And we just love meeting and greeting um, our visitors. So much so then in the winter times um, when we're working on projects, we can then go out around other communities and try and inspire and enthuse and motivate and encourage other community groups and try and say to them, if we can do it, you can do it. So we would do that in our winter months when it's not as busy with the flowers. Okay, it was after a visit to Stratford and Avon in England in 1986, and whenever we seen the number of tourists that were coming to see the beautiful flowers, that we decided we wanted to clean the village up and tidy it up. And it was really through the partnership with the council who entered us into Ulster and Bloom, for we had no knowledge of the in Bloom. So really then in 1987, the Brasheen Improvement Committee was formed. And it was the following year, 1988, that we first won Ulster and Bloom, going on to win it 21 times. And that led us into Britain and Bloom, which we won in 1993, subsequently winning it 10 times, culminating in the Champion of Champions, winning in 2007 and 2012. So that the In Bloom, really, which was totally unknown to us, has changed um, the, the way of life, if you like, in for Shane. Um, so much so that it's put us on a national and international stage. And as we strive for sustain sustainability, we can um, do that through our economic focus. So much so that all shop units are filled in the village. There's about 350 people employed and over 200,000 visitors come per year. So it's the rewards that we get, we get from the awards that keeps the people together. And where Britain is blooming, Britain is booming. This is our massive three acre sunflower and wildflower field in Port Lidon. We have three acres in total. We've got an acre of corn variety wildflowers all around the perimeter. And in the centre we have two acres of dwarf variety sunflowers. These are all DLF seeds sowed by my lovely brother Damien McAllister, the grass man. We've had thousands of visitors. We didn't think to count that we really regret not counting and it's everyone that's been taking loads of pictures in the evening in the golden hour it's been like a nest for photographers people are really interested in flowers first of all i would like to say how proud i am of my wee village and this tunnel behind me was one of the main links of taking limestone down the harbour on a miniature railway line that was even going whenever I was a child. And the tunnel was obscured and whenever we started our Ulster and Bloom business, we opened up the tunnel again and, and it's now, as you can see, and then we added the ornamental gardens to the front of it. If it wasn't for our good donors, the jewellery shop here, Steenson's, Antrim Estates, all the churches that give us funds that enables us to end up buying the plants that you see here today. We do it and everything else is done voluntary. So for them, this wouldn't exist without the help that they give us. A travelling motorist stopped one day and said, would we like them as he had them surplus. So seeing we have our organic fish in the area uh, being bred, we thought that it was a great idea to sort of take the fish theme out. Now I have to say I also work in the local visitor centre which is just across the way here and we have visitors from all over the world and quite a lot of them really, really uh, appreciate how beautiful Glenarm now looks uh, because when you enter the village everything is just so lovely. But now as I say our visitors from all over the world are just so appreciative and of course the local people are too. And it's nice that I'm here beside the marina where all the boats are coming in and the uh, the councillors, they were all very good tellers. 
help make the difference things like you know. We all thought how can we help the wee village because it was become an awful derelict and we says now we'll start this Ulster and Bloom and we get tremendous help from the Parks Department and the five of us we, we walked around the village and we says where can we make beds and what can we do and that's that and another thing and then we started going around the village and asking people like would anybody help to sponsor us so all the businesses in the village helped us private people came and helped us and that followed for the next two years and it gradually the group developed and as you can see the group of people sitting on the wall at the minute without them there would be no Ulster and Bloom My name is Bill Pollock and I chair the Brighter Whitehead group of volunteers, volunteer gardeners. We plant up the town of Whitehead and its railway station and we've entered for Britain and Bloom on at least 12 occasions. In the past year we found an old plough in a hedge. We extracted that, had it sandblasted and painted and it's now on display in Whitehead. We commissioned uh, a man called Clive Little who weaves in willow and he has created for us a sculptor in willow of a horse and a ploughman and it's on display in Whitehead and we've had quite a few visitors coming to see it and admire it. This is Whitehead where for the past few years we in Ulster and Bloom have won the Community Rail Halt. This boat was, was uh, donated by Brian Lewis and it's made a great contribution here to the station. This is just a small selection of the plants we grow in our own polytunnels in Brighter Whitehead. The Cineraria, the Begonia and for the first year we have Canna Lilies. We grow a lot more different sort but these are the spectacular showstoppers of the plant world. involved with Brighter Whitehead, it's a great community group and we enjoy each other's company. We are all gardeners. It's great to see Whitehead so flowery and floriferous. It's just a great uh, feeling to have Brighter Whitehead and be in it and the place looking so well for tourists and visitors alike. Uh, it's had a very positive effect on the business, had a very positive effect on the town. Um, we created the garden about a year ago uh, and were subsequently approached by the council and Brighter Whitehead to uh, be the host for their new uh, Willow Sculpture, which has uh, created a massive talking point in the town, um, has attracted people into the town and has certainly had a positive effect on our business. We've seen an increase in footfall, uh, we've seen uh, a broader spectrum of people coming down and. Uh, it's pretty much a reflection of how we do business in the town. We're, we're great at communicating, great at, uh, at uh, working with other organisations, groups, voluntary and business, and uh, great at working with the council. Um, the council have had a real positive effect on what we do, and long may it continue. A year and a half ago, this alleyway was complete dirt graffiti all over the walls and I thought what could I do to improve it? So first of all we did Thomas the Tank and all the carriages and I thought put a theme onto each carriage. I'm not familiar with them but the little kiddies requested them and some of the kids from the school actually come when I had the outline did and coloured them all in. It was a wee bit messy but we, we got it sorted again and I think they look really fantastic. I'm Bernie McNeely and I'm a member of CCP. 
Uh, we were formerly two groups that have amalgamated and we're now one group called CP. We do quite a lot of community work here in Kalibaki. And this is my friend here, Margaret Murphy. Mm. <laughs> well, I've been with the Kalibaki Community Partnership and a previous community group for quite a long number of years. Uh, the building that we're in now, uh, which is the main business centre, uh, was put up on the site of the former police station. Uh, it has been going now for uh, about 10 years. Uh, and currently uh, we have retail space, uh, we have office space and we have business units at the rear of the building. Uh, so from the, that we generate quite a bit of income which is then put back into the community in various forms. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, environmental work would be one of the things that we would use the money for. Uh, but there are other projects that we're involved in as well. Uh, and this particular area that we're in now is one that we hope to develop uh, into uh, community space, which is what it was originally intended for. Uh, and this particular area here uh, would be a sort of a uh, minor village hall uh, where people from the area uh, could hire out uh, if they would want to have uh, meetings or a conference or celebratory events or, or whatever. Uh, but it will be used to degenerate capital so that we can continue uh, to expand our community work um, and uh, probably particularly our environmental work. My name is uh, James Perry. I'm part of the Ahochel in Bloom group. Uh, Ahochel is a, a small village just about four miles to the west of Ballymena. We're one of several in Bloom groups in the Mid and East Antrim uh, Council area. Our particular group started about 10 years ago when a number of us who were involved in life in the village felt it was time to revamp the way in which the village was looking. Uh, we have been greatly supported by our local council and by the team of volunteers and residents in the village. All of our funding comes from uh, businesses and individuals and organisations across the village. So it's very much owned by the community. And I suppose in a way it has really been about community transformation. It's not just about flowers, it's about getting local residents involved in taking a pride in the place in which they live and in which they work. And we've had great success through Ulster and Bloom over the years. And as a result of that, we've gone through to Britain and Bloom, uh, culminating two years ago when we were recognised as champion of champions, being the best place in the whole of the United Kingdom. Um, the, the, the achievement, however, uh, was due to a whole range of people or sponsors, or volunteers, or local council, or community groups, everyone who came together. And we're continuing to try to develop uh, the village uh, in a way that will improve it as a place for, for young people to grow up and a place where people will want to come uh, and live. We work very closely with other groups in our uh, local council area and we really appreciate the opportunity that Council is now giving to bring the groups together where we can share best practice, talk about initiatives that we're undertaking and try and learn from one another and that has made a, a, a tremendous difference. At the minute we're spending I suppose upwards of 15 to 20 thousand pounds a year in the village but we're delighted that the funding is still coming through uh, so successfully and that will allow us to continue to develop what we're doing. Uh, we have a major initiative planned for later this year, which Council are taking the lead on, which will involve regeneration, significant regeneration in the middle of the village and the erection of a pillar clock, uh, new raised planting, which will be great for some of our older residents to look after, new seating and uh, semi-mature trees right in the very heart of the village, which we haven't had uh, before. We're delighted that this year, obviously, Britain and Bloom competition is coming to Northern Ireland, to Belfast, and it will be great to have some of the visitors from across the United Kingdom coming to see some of the examples of best practice that exist within Mid and East Antrim Borough Council area. I think it would probably be true to say that it's one of the most successful uh, council areas in the Britain and Bloom competition for the whole of the United Kingdom. So it'll be great to be able to showcase what we have all been doing as local volunteers.
Down here in the meadow I've seen vixens playing with their pups down here. I see otters, I see kingfishers, I see the first swallows coming in in the summertime and rearing their young and leaving again in the autumn. Same with the Canada geese. Sunshine, rain, hail or snow were outside, we wouldn't know what a roof is. Uh, but the main thing that you see in the big green area like this in the centre of our wee town is grandparents and parents out walking their young and it's just like all in nature and it's all in nature just played out here in front of us and it's just the same. They're just looking after the next generation making sure that they grow up safe and fit. And it's just great that within this borough we're able to work so closely together along with council staff to try and make sure that for residents of the whole borough this is a much better place in which to live, work and to play.